Hi everyone, it's Andrea. Welcome back to my channel. Everybody's got this book, but I'm still going to do a flip through of it. It's World Within Worlds by Kirby Rosanis. I've only got one of his books to get now, which is Geomorphia. It's on its way. Um, this was out of stock on Amazon, so I got it from W. H. Smith. It probably was more expensive that way, but I don't care. I wanted it. I'm currently colouring in Imagimorphia, so. Um, I love the way this book smells. I don't know whether it's the binding glue or what, but it smells beautiful. I'm just going to have to change my battery. Okay, sorry about that. Here we are. So World Within Worlds by Kirby Rosanis. So he does uh, double-sided pages, which is a shame, but it is what it is, but I'll show you each individual page. Um, as you can see, there's a double page spread. And again, that's just the information about edited designs, cover design, and so on. This first picture is a, a big dinosaur, as you can see a two-page dinosaur, with houses on its back as spines. I always find his work quite intimidating, so I am doing one of his pictures in Imagimorphia, and I've picked one of the more simple ones, but even that's quite complicated, but I am enjoying it so far, so that's the main thing. So we've got this moon. I've seen this done really well, actually. I've seen somebody do this, and it's absolutely stunning. Then we've got this one. So I'm going to try and do one in each of his books. <laughs> and I'll embarrass myself terribly by posting him on the Kirby Rosanne's Colouring Group page, fan page. I like the skull. It's always you get these little things in there and it's like, oh my life. I mean, look at that one. These just absolutely, and there's another double page spread. So I'll just do that so you can see. See, they're just amazing. Uh, artworks and again this is a double page spread of lots of towers underwater and a, a sort of like sea monster and you can see why they are so intimidating to people and yet people do beautiful work in them and look how tiny the lines are on the house top and again this one's one I've seen somebody doing that's really good this one I quite like. It's a book with um, all sorts of fantasy things in it. So that's what books are, right? And then you've got the book pages down there. Again, and, and the amount of double page spreads. You wouldn't want to use markers in here unless you weren't bothered about the page underneath. Or, you, or perhaps if you had two copies, you could do it. But uh, And then there's this one. That's nice. But look at the details. I mean, when you look at it, it's not that bad. It's all just leaves. It's when you get up into this bit. But I like this one, and this will probably be the first one I do, and I'll probably use pencils and gel pens, glitter pens from the bottom, and and that to make that really look nice, and then pencils and stuff on the inside. But I like that one. And again, another one of these double page rushes, giant blinking octopus, look at the size of it. <laughs> His work is amazing. I absolutely love it, but I'm terrified of colouring it. That one's not too bad, actually. Compass, again, that's, uh, you know, if you're a bit intimidated by doing, say, the next page, which is a brilliant one, this isn't as bad. If you look at this one, it's a library and, a, a, and a, a trees and books falling down and waterfalls and all sorts of things going on there. And uh, it's a waterfall of knowledge or something, I think, or trees. I don't know, but it's really good. Just very, very intimidating. What is the previous page? Not so much. Again, we've got another double page. This is a camel whose humps are volcanoes. That's different. And again, this one is two-sided, two but it's two hands uh, holding various things. So you could do it as two single-sided pages if you wanted to, but it's actually a double. This one looks like something out of Doctor Who <laughs> from the 60s. I love it. I do like that one. That one will be quite fun to colour, I think, because you could use all sorts with that. And again, double page spreads. They're just huge. It's very hard to do a flip through a book where every single picture, or well, almost every single picture, is a double page spread. We've got the monkey from the cover. And then we've got a cat, Egyptian cat, really quick, because we've got some uh, pyramids at the bottom. 
Oh yeah, there's a sphinx there and there's some pharaohs there and that's quite a good one. I love a bit of Egypt, me. And again, look at the detail. This one again, not too bad. You've got the fruit up there and the leaves and this. That's not too bad. And then you get this one with the uh, porcupine or the hedgehog. Porcupine, anteater, some sort of animal. I'm just intimidated by it. And then this is double pages, but again, you could do them one at a time and it's two crowns. So this would be the man's crown and this would be the woman's crown, I would have thought. But then I could be wrong, but that one, actually, I think it's the same crown damaged. It's hard to say. They're very nice crowns anyway. And then we get a great big dragon, double page spread. They are amazing. And again, this is double page spread, but again, you could do it as two separate uh, pages. This, but this, this one's going to take a while to flip through just because of the size of it. That one's quite good. Again, intimidating but not too bad. It's just very detailed lines. And then you've got this one. I quite like that one, but uh, again, look at the detail. His detail is amazing. If you never coloured in this and you just looked at it for the artwork, you wouldn't be doing anything wrong. This one I've seen done as well, with little ball balls with the um, windmills in it, and I really like that. I think that is a lovely one. Again, not too intimidating, but it looks more intimidating than it is, I think. But I like that one. And then we've got the, the doll's house. Again, a double page spread, lots going on. But uh, I like that one. Well, I like them all, actually. And then uh, they got some flying bees. Or wasps, I guess they bees, I don't know. With ships on their backs. And then we've got a fun fair and a flower. I actually quite like that, I like that idea. That's quite nice. This is the first time I've actually looked through the book properly. Another double pager here with the houses on the leaves. So I've, and, oh, and ants are carrying them, that is so cool. So like I said, I have, this is the first time I've really looked at it and um, Like I said, I got these first three books from the works for a fiver each. Largemorphia, Mythomorphia and Fan um, Imagimorphia, Animorphia and Imagimorphia. I got them for a fiver each. I got, which one is it? Is it Fanta? Phantomorphia here? Phantomorphia here and I'm just waiting for Geomorphia. And then I've only got to get the um, Doodle Invasions. I won't get, um, what's it called? That's better. You can see it all on one page now. Colour Morphia, because it's just um, the best of, really. Unless I make a mess of one I really like. I might, I might get it. So here's the uh, next one. There's a sloth in the <laughs> I'm just looking at how detailed this work is. And it's just stunning when you get the double pages like this. It's... The work is... He is something to be admired, I tell you that now. Again, we've got the modern windmills and barn and an old windmill and an old barn. I quite like that idea, old and new, new and old. But look at the rest of the background. It is so busy. And we've got a single page with a snake and a train. Oh, the snake's a train. Oh, that's cool. And we've got an Aztec pyramid inside a I want to say astronaut's helmet. That's pretty cool. Double page, two stags fighting. Now this is a nice one, the candles. Uh, John the Bibliophile Colorist was doing this one. And he used the Neo Colors and it was looking fantastic, I've got to be honest. Very good. I've only got the 10 Neo Colors at the moment and I can't afford to buy any more. Not if I want to buy, it's, it's, do I buy supplies or do I buy books? <laughs> what, what do I do? Um, I might buy a few extra colours. That's quite a nice one with the box with everything for, coming out of it, all the different things. And then we've got a clock. Again, not too intimidating there. You look at it and you think, oh my God, but then when you look at it a bit better, you break it down, it's not too bad. 
And that's the way I find to do busy, very, very busy pictures, is to break it down and pick one element and just colour one element. So for instance, the one I'm doing in Imagimorphia, I've done the background. When I've finished doing the background, because I'm using the Neo Tell 2s to do it, and I've only done half of it so far, I will then pick another element, so I'm going to do this element all the way through the picture. And that's how I would do this first. So I would say, okay, I'm going to colour the tree part, the leaves on the trees first. Or I'm going to colour the birds. I'm going to colour this. And I think that's the best way to break these down, because otherwise it's too intimidating. This is quite cool. You've got little reptile sea creatures with pyramids on their backs. Again, this one I think is a nice one, the Russian nesting dolls. Um, and I don't think this is too intimidating anyway, and I could see me doing this one as well. It gets a bit more intimidating because as they open up, so this is this one, and then it he's taking it up, and you see the bit inside. And inside that one is, so you take, that, that doll comes out of that one, and that doll comes out of that one, and you can see different things that are inside the nesting dolls rather than the dolls sitting in there. <coughs> but not too intimidating, so I could see me doing that one. And then we've got this one. And then this one. Quite a nice one. Again, I don't think that one's too intimidating, to be honest. Looking at it. Some are more intimidating than others. And this one's not too bad either. And I quite like the fact you've got the, the solar system on the wings of the... Um, I want to say pterodactyl type things. I'm not good on dinosaurs. And we've got a leopard with um, diamonds coming off of it. That's quite good. And we've got a bird cage. And it's got unicorns and rainbows and that's pretty. Got, again, two uh, fighting things. It's amazing. This is a long flip through, I'm not going to lie. Boots. That's cool. Again, you could do them, although it's a double page spread, you could do one side, leave it, and do that as one picture, and then come back and do the other one. And that's it, then you've got this bit here, and then it says all the answers, which are all the, the hidden things in the pages. And it shows you where they are. But I'm not gonna spend too long on those, because that would spoil the fun of actually colouring the pictures and thinking, why is there a thing on that page? Or why is that there on that page? So there's that moon picture that's been partly coloured in. So that is Worlds Within Worlds. So of course, there are worlds within the world. So there you've got your camel and you've got your volcano. And then you've got, and he's in the water as well. So it's constantly something for you to look at. There's so much to see in each picture. It's just amazing. So that's Kirby Rosanis' new book, World Within Worlds. Hope you've enjoyed this flip through and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.